Hello, my name is Ana Abril Hernández, and I would like to start by thanking the organizers of the 19th International Conference New Directions in the Humanities for accepting my proposal to present my research entitled Store Molthorpe's Electronic Literature, Give Me a Maze and I Shall Immortalize Borges. In this study, I'm going to compare Store Molthorpe's piece of literature, electronic literature, entitled Victory Garden and Jorge Luis Borges' short story, The, uh, the Garden of uh, Forking Paths. I'm going to develop a cross-cultural and intermedial uh, semiotic analysis, where I'm going to um, put under the semiotic lens Molthorpe's electronic novel. To start with, I'd like to read um, one of the uh, passages text passages that appears in the novel Victory Garden. It is a reference to, a, a clear and, and specific reference to Jorge Luis Borges. And it is going to be one of the fundamental bases of this uh, novel, of the comparison between this electronic novel, novel game, we're going to see how it relates to both novels and games, and, um, and uh, Borges' own short story. In the Lexia entitled the, the Place of Big Wind, we can read, at the time of the last great war, Jorge Luis Borges imagined a fiction that would not conform to lines of determinism or destiny. And it ends, now we find ourselves living once more through a world conflict. Now, interestingly, in this, uh, in this electronic novel, what we are going to find could be taken, as can be seen in this image, as a labyrinth. A labyrinth in the sense that there is um, a multi-network uh, of, of electronic passages that takes us from one lexia, that is from one screen to the other, and that is how the story, the plot, the storyline develops. However, we're going to see that the t this is not the basis of a labyrinthine structure that we can find in uh, Stuart Malthrop, but rather that of a different structure that shares with labyrinths only a small uh, degree of, uh, of similarity. To start with, we have in mind the traditional image of labyrinths. Now, labyrinths have uh, a typical uh, characteristic um, features the fact that they have a center, also the fact that there is normally just one way in and one way out. There is also the importance of the center in the sense that you need to reach that center in order for the labyrinth to make sense. However, similar structures to the labyrinth do not have that center, not necessarily at least, and the way in does not necessarily have to be the way out. I'm referring to mazes. The maze is a different kind of labyrinth where they may be, and in fact there are very often many dead ends, as you can see on this image. There may be a center or there may not be a center, and the main purpose of the maze is not to reach the center, as it used to be for labyrinths, both physical and um, as drawings, but in a maze we are going to find that the end of the maze is simply to traverse the alleys, to, to walk along the alleys and try to avoid the dead ends of the maze. One step beyond the maze and much farther from the labyrinths are rhizomes. The rhizome shares only a slight nuance of resemblance with both labyrinths and mazes. And I'm citing and I'm quoting here Rhizomes, because it's going to be the structure that is going to pervade Victory Garden. Rhizomes have, according to the Luz and Watari, a centered, they have no hierarchy, as you can see here, they have different nodes. Each of these nodes may be taken as a different center. None of them may be regarded as a center in itself, much like it happens in Victory Garden, this electronic hypertextual novel. In Victory Garden, there is a structure, as you can see on this map from the digital novel. As you can see here, 
it does share the, with rhizomes the center. Now, there is no single center. There is no hierarchy in the sense that there is no point to which the events are um, directed. There is also no single character in Victory Garden, which tells the adventures of Emily Ronbert. Okay, she may be sometimes regarded as a main character, not exactly as such, but in the sense that it is her that some characters relate to and mention. And it seems at some points that it is around her that the story revolves, although this is not always the case. Similarly, in this novel and in the general structure of rhizomes, there is no pre-existence of the structure. As the nodes advance, they take space and the, the rhizome itself is being built, much like in a, a digital novel with the hypertext and links, hyperlinks. The, it is therefore boundless in the sense that space is occupied as long as it progresses, as long as a rhizome is being built. There is no boundaries to this structure. If we focus on the cyberspace and Alexias in this electronic ergodic novel, and I'm going to see why it is ergodic in a minute, this game novel belongs to the category of ergodic literature. It has hyperlinks, which are also called Alexias, over uh, 900 Alexias and a structure in fractals, which makes it very fragmented of course, passing from one structure to the other without a single line that is different uh, users of this novel, different readers, different players to a certain extent we could call them to. Different users of this novel may take different reading experiences and may get different um, versions of this novel depending on the hypertext paths they take. The spatiotemporal setting for this novel is the Gulf War and the American and Persian Gulf and interestingly, in Borges, we could find a Second World War scenario as a background of the story. And here we have another war, another real war as well. As I mentioned before, this is a multi-character story. However, Emily Runbird, as I said, is a semi-main character, not exactly a protagonist, but then again, some storylines some storylines do relate to her in, to a higher degree. More similarities with Borges' own story, a garden, uh, The Garden of Forking Paths, is that the rhizomatic plot is created as a story unfolds. However, in Malthrop, the labyrinth pre-exists. That is, in Malthrop, we do have a rhizome, but it's a specific, a different kind of rhizome. In Malthrop, the rhizome needs to pre-exist in the sense that the Alexias need to be created beforehand, as it is. Stuart Maltrop needs to create, has created these Alexias, these screens, these chunks of text for the users to visit them before the user, um, before users themselves visit these spaces. Interestingly, we're no longer, and then um, we're no longer before a single user or a single receiver of information, but as always with electron electronic literature, we have a, pr a prosumer. According to Hanyo Bersem, and I quote, it would be easy to relate the writerly text to what Espinarset has called the, the, the ergodic hypertext. What Barthes means by readerly participation is that the reader should participate in the delight of creation and creativity. Quoted from How We Read Towards an Ecological Philology. About the space occupied by this specific different kind of rhizome that we find in Victory Garden, we have a topology of cyberspace. The map that appears at the very beginning of the story, the map um, in this story that appears right as you enter Victory Garden may have different meanings for different scholars. It has received the symbolism of a regular garden. For others, it's been regarded as a graveyard, interestingly enough, since the context, the backdrop of this story is a war. Some others have seen it as Borges' own garden of forking paths, which makes sense considering the relationships that uh, Maltrop himself draws with Borges' story. 
there is no mimesis in this story between the world and the texts. Given that the rhizome encompasses reality and the book, it is not a copy, no longer a copy, but a virtual world in itself. Meaning, the world in, Vi in Victory Garden does not claim uh, veracity to any external um, world. Although it does talk about real events in the phenomenological world, the very electronic world in this electronic novel may be regarded as a unity, as a whole, having meaning in itself. There is nomadism and the idea of the deferral, the territorialization, and also fragmentations for the reasons that I mentioned before, not only because of the chunks of text, they remind us all of the Los Anguataris rhizomatic structure of the rhizome. The, epi the epistemological view of this hyper-reality that appears in Victory Garden is that of the rhizome of life, not only because it, um, it does call our attention, it does call, um, call claim veracity to the external events that have ha actually happened, but also because the story is built in the very form of a rhizome. It means that the the links between the nodes are equating, are in a way parallel to the links that we find in real life between ev events and the relations that we find between people in the phenomenological uh, world that we may call real world. As for uh, the space-time, in Malthrop we can we could say that uh, the idea of the space-time that Borges envisioned has come to um, a materialized self. And I quote from Victory Garden, Borges' story was not about the open-endedness of time. It's about a guy who only has one option, so he uses it and gets hung. Oh, wow, that's the ending. End of his rope. End of the line. Suppose the story is really a parable. This belongs to the Lexia's foregone conclusion and parable. The labyrinth, uh, of, the labyrinth of hyperlinks that operates in the thresholds takes the form of a preliminary stage, a liminal stage, or a stage of liminality, and a post-liminal stage. In the preliminary stage, users, before entering the world in the novel game, get acquainted with it in the sense that they can already predict what is going to happen, what they're going to find, given that it talks, it refers, it deals with uh, a real war, yeah, a war, a war that is already known to the users. The stage of liminality is the story itself, as the user traverses the lexias and advances in the story. The postliminal stage are uh, the cognitive processes that are activated to interpret the story and establish a comparison with the physical world that we know, that we relate to, in which we live. There is also scaffolding in the story, which is aimed at reshaping our knowledge from the lexias. Again, um, establishing a relationship between two worlds, the phenomenological world that we take um, as real, and the world in the story. If we focus on the language that Malthrop uses in this uh, story, we have a, a division between mimesis, the images, and diegesis, the language. There is also fragmentation because of this very differentiation. There is no imitation of a model, but the production of another original, as, as, uh, as stated before. This is the va basis for the worlds or world in Victory Garden, depending how uh, it is interpreted. It, it calls for signifieds in the phenomenological real world. The language used here takes the form of the second person, you, for instructions, and the inclusive we aimed to uh, aimed at expressing closeness. There are a number of calls for veracity outside the internal semiosis of the text, akin to Borges in his extratextual historical references, as said before. And interestingly, too, this is no spiral and no maze, of course, much farther away from the form of a labyrinth. But what we find in Victory Garden takes the form of a rhizome, of a specific kind of rhizome, with some peculiarities that I've mentioned before. Finally, as conclusions for this research, in Victory Garden we have an electronic rhizome 
of course not the kind of uh, Ryzen with every single characteristic that the Los Anguatari put forth, but with the um, nuances of the electronic medium, the digital medium that is enacted in this story. Therefore, there is neither inside nor outside, also because these boundaries are in a way blurred, given the historical references that Moldorp is continually making, is, is constantly making uh, to the external world. Finally, Victory Garden is not part of the world, of the phenomenological world, that is, but at the same level as reality, following the structure of the Rhysum. Thank you very much.